Hello, um, thank you for coming and listening to my talk today. Uh, this talk is called GitOps is a Means, uh, Where is the End? And uh, my name is George. Um, I snuck this slide in real quick uh, to maybe give you a hint as to where I'm going a bit more with this. Um, this talk is not uh, so much about my frustrations with GitOps, but maybe the Git part in GitOps, and just maybe where the GitOps experience is lacking a little, but we'll get to that later on. Um, so just to introduce us a bit more, uh, this is the Flips team. I'm a member of this team. Um, Mark, our founder, created an open source feature flag solution back in 2019 called Flipped. Um, and uh, in 2022, uh, founded a company around it. And that company consists of just us three, myself, Mark, and Yofi. Um, yeah, so that's flipped. Um, but today I want to take you on a little bit of a journey. I want to rewind the clock a bit and go back to a past role of mine where we had uh, a complex system that was uh, that embraced GitOps practices to deliver software. Um, I want to talk you a bit through that um, so that I can uh, sort of give some context as to some of the my experiences there that influenced some of the things we've been doing uh, since then, um, and then take you on to to talk about what we did uh, and what we've been doing at Flipped, um, uh, the open source feature flag solution, what we've we've done with uh, those GitOps experiences to bring feature flags in, in line in that world. And then I want to briefly touch on um, some, mo some more problems that we've still not managed to quite solve yet. Um, and I think that uh, broadly apply to GitOps uh, still as well. Um, and then end with a little experiment that we've built, open source experiment, um, that tries to address part of, uh, part of the problem, part of the equation. Great. So um, as I said, I want to start with a past experience of mine. Um, prior to working uh, full time on Flipped, um, <clears throat> I worked at a, a, a company with Yofi. Uh, called uh, Influx, and we built a time series database uh, that was deployed onto many Kubernetes clusters. And this platform uh, probably looks quite familiar to those that embrace GitOps. Um, we had uh, a number of multiple Kubernetes clusters across uh, three major cloud providers. And in order to configure those, we used Argo CD to uh, watch a single configuration repository and apply the configuration there to these various uh, instances of Kubernetes across these cloud providers. And then we also had a separate application repository where we, where the, you know, engineers were building and writing software and writing code, and we were building uh, container images, pushing those, and then those, the image digests that came out of that process were automatically written to our configuration repository. Um, and, and that's how application code changes flowed all the way through um, to be deployed onto our Kubernetes cluster. So this is probably not that surprising. Um, we had developers who contributed primarily to the application repository. We had developers who contributed primarily to the configuration repository. And we had some developers in between who did a bit of both and sort of straddled both worlds. We also had uh, automation and code that was uh, contributing to these repositories too. So we had humans and machines writing commits to these repositories. So hopefully that's not very uh, surprising architecture. Uh, it's a very high level. Uh, there are a lot more details than just this. Um, but uh, one thing to say about uh, there were certain you know members, certain teams, particularly ones focused on application development, that weren't particularly that didn't particularly enjoy having to contribute to the configuration repository. This configuration repository, as you might imagine, got quite big, com complex, and deep, and sprawling. Um, we had all sorts of variations in configuration because of the different environments that we deployed to, and the number of clusters, and the different phases of these clusters, you know, staging, production, and so on. Um, and that made this repository, like, it had a quite a steep learning curve. And if you wanted to get something simple done, it was kind of an off-putting experience. And this kind of had a couple side effects. Um, if 
you know, if you're an application developer and you just want to, you know, you just want to get something done, you, you've got a lot to think about, a lot to build, and you know, you want to change the log level in, in an environment or something like that, that you don't want to necessarily be a painful experience. And so, because it was so painful, you had to, you know, clone a repository, know where to find the file that you needed to change, make multiple files, make those edits, commit, add, push, open a PR, get someone to approve it, get it merged. That was all kind of a high barrier for some relatively small changes. So sometimes you get, you know, some of these engineers throwing that work over the wall, just throwing it over to our team with an issue and hoping it gets solved for them. Or worse, sometimes they try and work around this problem by doing things like baking the behavior they wanted into their application based on the environment it was deployed to. So they they would, you know, write code to be like, oh, if I'm in this environment, then behave this way, which made the software that they're writing um, uh, hard to test outside of those environments um, because you couldn't change these behaviors uh, via configuration anymore. And that's something that we didn't want them to do. But when we challenge that, you know, it would be like, well, it's too hard to change an environment variable. So this is what I do. So that was one pain that I observed and it felt like Git was kind of the only way to solve it at, that we were offering them and we want something better. Now, additionally to this, we also had another thing, we had feature flags. Now the feature flag system we used was this thing outside of our GitOps pipeline. And they were super useful because they allowed developers to decouple their deployments from their releases, right? Now developers can safely change some behavior, protect it with a feature flag, get the code deployed up to all these environments, and then they can progressively enable that feature environment per environment basis thanks to this feature flag service, which was great and perfect. But my one criticism uh, of this is that feature flags are just configuration like anything else, right? Uh, they change the behavior of your application at runtime. They reconfigure it to, you know, to behave differently. Now, when something goes wrong, uh, which things do constantly, uh, you're going to want to understand both the current state of your system and how that state of your system has changed, right? And that's one of the major benefits of GitOps is we have this immutable history of how your system's configured. But if you use a traditional feature flag system that sits outside of this flow, you've now kind of subverted that, that benefit and you have to correlate both what changed in Git with what changed in your feature flag system to try and debug and understand, you know, which thing caused the effects that you're observing. Um, and so that was something I always wished we could bring feature flags back in, um, back in through Git and so that Git continued to provide the full picture of, um, of uh, yeah, how the system looked. And so this was sort of some of the things I took when I left uh, Influx back in 2022 with me to Flit. Um, feature flags, how can we bring them in line with GitOps? Um, and GitOps in general, like not everyone wants to uh, contribute to make configuration changes through Git? Um, is that the only interface we have, adding, committing, pushing, pull requests? Can we can we make something better? And also, my team who, who looked after the configuration repository, we spent a lot of time trying to improve these experiences. And along the way, we spent a lot of time fiddling with the tedious parts of, of Git uh, and the Git protocols to do that. Um, it'd be nice if there were some tools to help kind of encapsulate that behavior and, and take it away so that, you know, more platform focused teams can, can think about just the, the behaviors they want to, to, to manage. So I want to take that experience and, and, and fast forward to, to flipped, uh, last year, uh, I joined, um, uh, Mark, the founder reached out to me. We had worked together, uh, back in 2016 to 2019, um, I watched him start this this open source project, and then he reached out and said, "Hey, I want to do this full time. Do you want to come and join me?" Um, he explained to me that 
He wants Flipped to be a developer focused uh, feature flag tool to help primarily focus on the problem of decoupling uh, re your releases from deployments. So that really resonated with me. And I was like, well, I've had all these problems with with uh, my feature flag experience too, and I'd love to bring those. And, and so we talked about that. And one of the first things we've, we've done in this last year is try to tackle uh, GitHub's for flags. Um, so these numbers here are the versions of Flipped uh, that we've shipped over the last year. Um, back in June, we shipped 1.23 and we launched our first experimental support for uh, a GitOps experience in Flipped. So you can now, at this point, with some experimental feature flags enabled, you can uh, store your feature flag configuration as files in either a local directory or in a Git repository. Um, and Flipped will just uh, follow the state of your remote repository. We made this generally available back in, I think, August in 1.25. Um, and at the same time, an awesome contributor uh, added additional support to put these configuration files in S3. And, and so S3 can help to scale this experience with Flipped. Um, and then only this month, November, uh, when, I re when I recorded this, uh, we added uh, OCI support. So just like with S3, you can use any OCI compatible registry as the distribution mechanism for feature flag state, which again helps with the experience of managing this state and scaling uh, a large sort of flipped um, uh, set of flipped instances uh, sourcing their feature flag state. So we've taken a bite out of this problem. Now you've got the the delivery mechanism for feature flags from declarative files um, in a number of uh, sort of Git or container adjacent sort of backends. But then comes uh, the next problem. This is a problem we kind of expected, uh, and that is this product doesn't want to learn Git. Um, and what I mean by that is that feature flags are often not just for developers, right? Not just consumed and used and 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 toggled by uh, developer sort of personas. Uh, feature flags are often given to you know maybe product or project management or other functions of the organization to change behavior, maybe on a per customer basis. Um, they have a broader you know set than just the deploying and releasing, and and these audiences don't necessarily have in the first place knowledge of how to clone a repository and make a change in a in a file in order to do that and that's a high bar to expect from this audience and i think additionally uh teams who have who want to commit these feature flag files particularly you know alongside code even in the repositories probably don't want to give the full sort of scope of the repository access to these audiences because there's too much in there for that audience to need to have to worry or think about. Um, so this is not a great experience. Uh, folks don't want to, these folks don't want to have to clone, add, commit, push and so on. But this sort of started to seem familiar to me as a problem, um, as and when people brought it up. Um, I feel like I've heard this before. Going back to when we had a configuration repository and our own application developers didn't really want to have to clone, branch, find, edit, add, commit, push, open a PR just to change an environment variable. Well, now not only do we have this problem exists, but it's true for people in product who want to enable a feature flag. Um, I think I can think of times where I didn't want to have to go through this whole process just to change a log level. Um, and I think, again, it, it broadly applies to a whole host of common configuration like changes that we make, like even maybe adding a whole new service. These things that are quite templated, repeatable processes, uh, why should we always have to go through this sort of set of steps just to get, you know, get the same result? And I think this is really a, a platform engineering problem. Um, to me, this is this makes me think of platform engineering when I hear the, these problems, because that's the goal of platform engineers is to build these self-service 
internal developer platforms that provide a nice and intuitive experience for you know application developers to get what they need um and yeah this all sort of feels like the same problem and you know instead of just getting on with the problem ahead of me which is getting feature flags uh to uh, work with our with our ui uh, and supporting a, a ui over just flipped and instead got a bit distracted at the maybe the the next level of abstraction around this problem and started thinking about the general uh space of making a click ops experience um for uh, GitOps repositories and this more broader platform engineering problem i think with GitOps at the core so that takes me on to this last bit where i want to talk a bit about um a solution that we've experimented with which looks at maybe a slightly broader picture than just our feature flag system and uh, and that GitOps in general so so does it illustrate that I think the GitOps space and the tooling that, that has been built is absolutely excellent, um, particularly for taking a configuration repository with a bunch of desired state and acting on some real world systems to make them match the desired state. I think tools like Argo and Flux, um, even things like Terraform, which again, I think are tools for taking a desired state and making, you know, making the changes that are necessary um those are all excellent and they've allowed us to commit our code to through things like github and GitLab, and have that experience i think they continue to get better and they're all also already quite excellent but i think there is a bit of a gap when it comes to maybe helping to improve the experience of automating the creation of these code changes um because I want my cake and I want to eat it. I want, what I want to see is a kind of click ops experience, but over the GitOps pipelines. So I want to that bring back that sort of Heroku like delight, which I think every sort of internal platform uh, team is probably trying to achieve that kind of, when I make a configuration change, like adding an environment variable or changing a log level. What I then want to see is that actually materialize as a code change in the relevant space in my repository. I want that to be put in a pull request. I want the relevant people assigned to that pull request. Maybe it goes through CI, maybe it automatically gets put in a merge queue. I want all these kinds of, I want the capabilities to build these kinds of experiences. And as maybe like an additional bonus, it would be nice if uh, this solution was less focused on the a specific way of organizing your GitOps repo, if it was extensible and could manage uh, a whole variety of the, these great tools that already exist, like Argo, like Flux, like Terraform. Um, there are so many ways that, that teams construct and organize their uh, configuration repositories today so many languages that consume i mean you know okay there's terraform for um uh for configuring cloud infrastructure but then there's also things like pulumi there's cdk we've got yaml for kubernetes but we've got json we've got json app we've got q we've got customize there's just so many tools and they're all great and everyone wants to you know get what they want from each of these tools um so it would be nice if there potentially exists a solution that doesn't dictate that that part of the of the equation that just helps you to build the experience um, you want over these existing project structures and tooling. So spoiler alert, I don't have I haven't got all the answers to this, but um, we did we have tried a little experiment to look at what something might you know what one piece of this puzzle might look like to help that uh, to help solve that problem. Uh, and this project that we've devised is called Cup. Um, you can find it here at github.com slash flipped io slash cup. Um, and we kind of describe it as uh, an API server for Git uh, that helps you to present an API over your Git repository uh, that um, can change the, the contents of your Git repository based on some sort of desired 
uh, state. Um, one of the sort of best analogy I can come up with is uh, is basically to sort of yeah draw some similarities to Kubernetes. So this is a very uh, very simple illustration of of what Kubernetes does. Right um, on the left hand side, you've got Kubernetes' own API server and its own state. Kubernetes stores a desired state of the world, and then it's constantly reconciling the desired state of the world with the actual state of a cluster. And it's making changes to that cluster to reflect and match the desired state. Um, I think similarly, tools like uh, Argo CD and Flux CD do the same thing, but this time in front of Kubernetes, they take the desired state uh, of the configuration in a Git repository, and they make sure that the actual state of the Kubernetes API matches that. So taking that, you could say that cup goes in front of the Git repository and it takes, it presents uh, an API, which you can pass your desired state of your Git repository. And then it's cup's job to reconcile that with the actual contents in your Git repository. And when desired state changes, it can actually turn those changes into PRs and pull requests to make the physical changes in the Git repository. So you can imagine you can stick all these things together and you've just got reconciliation loops all the way down. We actually have a little labs repo um, which demonstrates a end-to-end -end cup with Argo in a Kubernetes cluster. So these this can be created. Um, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to sort of draw this little uh, diagram of that um, and sort of make these connections between how how cup works uh, and how similar it is to kubernetes because we really did steal a lot of the concepts uh, of kubernetes when writing this uh, first iteration of cup um, cup actually has the concept of custom resource definitions if you're familiar with those in kubernetes and it has the concept of controllers um, cup lets you define these things these are the extension points so that you can write your own custom behavior for Cup so that you can integrate the project structure layout of your configuration repository to meet your needs so that you can <clears throat> leverage the tools that you need, whether that's JSON or Q or just YAML and Helm or whatever it is that you're using and build your own controllers to manipulate your repo content structure to meet your the needs of whatever you're solving. Um, so, it's, it's all very conceptual, um, but uh, this is kind of like a little flow of how sort of Cup handles uh, a request to set this, the, uh, the state of a resource uh, in it. Um, so here we have this payload that's very Kubernetes looking being put into the Cup API server. Um, this payload represents, you know, a service, maybe some conceptual service in your organization. Uh, and it has a very sort of constrained set of, of free sort of parameters in its spec. It has an image, maybe some replicas and some environment variables. Um, and it's Cup's job to find the right controller for that resource type, uh, invoke it with the contents of Git at some tracked branch. You know, maybe it's the main branch. Um, Cup will do that. It will clone the repository. It will find the right controller. It will call that controller with the new desired state of the world. And it's the controller's job to look at Git at that particular reference, that particular head commit, look at the contents, figure out where this particular instance of the service lives currently, or if it doesn't exist, uh, find a place for it. And then to materialize and to write out the changes to that repository that are necessary to make that instance either exist or be updated um, and then cup intercepts those changes made to the file system made to the repository and it bundles them up into a new branch it open it pushes that branch out adds commits the changes pushes the branch opens up a pull request on some configured uh, source control like github and that's kind of like very high level flow that sort of goes through um you start with this new desired state of some high level concept like a service and then the controller turns that into a change and cup opens a pull request for you. Um, so we we built a tool that can do that and we use we have a sort of very general purpose 
controller that comes out of the box that sort of use, uses Go templates to help you sort of with a low code, uh, but rigid sort of get quick, get started ex experience with, with Cup. But we also support a more general uh, WASM interface for writing controllers um, that allows you to really broadly extend Cup's capabilities and the kinds of repository content structures and tooling that you might uh, you might choose to use with Cup. Um, and we've actually written an implementation of a controller with WASM for uh, Flip's own configuration format, which is its own custom format. Um, and I have a quick uh, demo of it here. So um, this is very quick. This is a flipped instance. And here we're using the Cup CLI to interface with a Cup D instance, which is pointed at this flipped instance, the flipped state. And here we're going to edit the flag that we saw. Here, Cup edit is like kubectl edit. If you're familiar with that, it quickly pulls down the reference. Um, they, we're changing the flag to enabled. And Cup has gone and turned that change into a pull request for us in the relevant file in the right place. So once we approve that, we merge that, as I said before. Um, Flip these days is, can support sourcing this state straight from Git. So here we're seeing a flag has been enabled because we've merged it straight into the source repository. So this is a real, that was a real whirlwind video of the experience. Um, but here we've we've sort of got an end-to-end, -end, uh, in this case, CLI experience, um, cup ships with a, a CLI for interfacing with it. Um, and uh, just sort of shows you how now, in order to turn a feature flag on, I don't need to know which particular file I have to look in uh, to to edit and and add and commit and and push those changes. Uh, Cup can simplify that that process uh, through the flipped controller that we have configured here. So that's it. Uh, that's my super whirlwind tour of Cup. If you're interested. Um, you can come and read the docs at cup.flips.io uh, or you can come and find the repo at github.com slash flip-io slash cup. Um, it's a uh, it's very early experiment. Uh, I'm sure it's got all sorts of rough edges, but um, uh, hopefully that kind of sparks some, uh, some curiosity in you to think about how you might be able to put uh, an API in front of your Git repo and how that might then power further upstream tools like UIs um, and CLIs and so on. Um, big shout out to other projects I think are trying to bring a ClickOps experience to GitOps. I think Gimlet.io is an excellent example of that. I know there's uh, Kratix, I think, it, it is sort of helping towards that. It's really exciting to see people focusing and feeling this pain and thinking about this problem. Um, I'd like to see more tools come about for helping template out some of these uh, these experiences. Um, yeah, so we can get away from just pull requests and uh, um, and having to know repository structures and things like that as a barrier to entry for, for more application developers. Um, thank you for taking the time to listen to this. Uh, as I said, my name is George. You can find me on Twitter here. You can find me on GitHub here. Or you can come and check out our site, uh, Flipped. .io. We also have a Discord at discord.flipped.io. Come and come and chat to us if you want to learn more about flipped feature flags or you want to talk about cup. Um, we'd love to hear from you. Cool. Thanks for listening. <laughs>